a sentence, we're live and I'm laughing. <laughs> it always makes everybody wonder, what the heck have they been talking about behind the scenes? Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they know, they know you're full full of it. No, full of it. Oh, I really no. am. I really you know, am. That you're, <laughs> and you, and you want to tell us the awesome, you were on an awesome interview today. We didn't get to see it yet. Oh, wow. That was so much fun. Uh, for those of you who, who don't know, Christy Rufino. Uh, Christy is C-H-R-I-S-T-I-E and then Rufino, R-U-F-F-I-N-O. She was kind enough to give us a wonderful endorsement for the book. Uh, she's got a podcast that is just amazing. I, I listen to it a lot. Uh, Bob Berg's been on there. He, he was on her first episode and her 100th episode. Oh, so oh that's neat. She, she just And she's an absolutely awesome lady and got a great content. Everybody should check her show out. Today, I was actually uh, honored to be one of her guests. And it, oh, she was, that's so awesome. I can't wait to see it. You always do good. Well, you she, always do a good interview. She, she makes it good in this case because she it was it was a joy and, and it was a lot of fun. And so, uh-oh, I, I see somebody can't stay long. Facebook user, come back, come back. <laughs> <laughs> did you wear your merch sweatshirt? I did. I did. Oh, I, awesome. I the day. On, I on the show, on her show? No, no, I wore a, I wore a, a nice <laughs> podcast shirt for the show. Oh, okay. <laughs> this, this, this is our family. I can wear whatever I want to. I'm this. all, oh, I'm all swanky tonight. You do. Yeah, yeah. Oh, can I tell you what happened last night? Please do. In the, in the Uber. <laughs> so not only did uh, my Uber driver sign up to sell Avon, which was awesome. She didn't do it on the spot. She um, asked me how to buy Skinsosoft. And I told her that my text that had the link to the Avon shuffle card right. said to buy or sell. And right. she said, you know, I might do that. And then she, I got a text from her right after she dropped me off that showed me a screenshot of her, me as her mentor on her new contract. You are so, a rock yeah. star. <laughs> but but she was funny anyway, because, oh, oh, she said, how did you come up with the title for the book? Because we were talking about the book. So I told her the story. And she said, um, she's read The Go-Giver, but she was like, wicked impressed that I actually know Bob Berg and John David Mann. I'm like, I know them. And we she's know like, people. You do not. She was like, you do not know them. And I'm like, <laughs> I do. I said, I can prove I know them because in the Go Giver, in the acknowledgments, I'm actually listed because I was a pre reader. Yep. And she's like, no, sir, I'm going home and looking the book. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ooh. Yeah. Oh, let's say hi. Uh, some hellos. <coughs> hi, Peg. A couple hey. of uh, Facebook users. Just say, you have to put your name. We won't always know who you are. Uh, let's see. Hi, Lisa. Hi, June. Hi, Teresa. Like Diane. Platinum behavior. <laughs> I hope, hey, I hope your new recruit is watching the show tonight, or at least uh, get her to watch the show later so she can see that she was mentioned. Yes, that would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. She had a whole bunch of good ideas about uh, a school she wants to start and stuff. And I wanted to keep in touch with her anyway. Normally, I got her cell phone number and her name from sending the shuffle card. Normally I would come home and go to whitepages.com, get the address and send her a card, yeah. but she made it easy because it's all on the Avon contract, including her birthday. So That's I can good. send her a birthday card. So <laughs> well, I've got, I've got to, I've got, I want you to tell the story, but I'm going to have to introduce the story on this. All right. Okay. <clears throat> yesterday, our, our, our blue haired partner here, or uh, I think it was yesterday. She's in the airport. Oh, yeah. and maybe it was two days. I don't remember. She was in the airport very recently. But before <laughs> I tell this story, I'm going to have to get a beatbox going. <laughs> okay. Because Lisa is now a rock star getting recognized in places where people say, so go ahead. Okay, so I'm going out to, I have my uh, carry on. I'm wheeling it out to the pickup location in Denver for the rideshare place. There's a place you go. And a lady comes running up to me and she said, you're the blue haired lady from Avon, aren't you? And she was so excited. She dragged her husband over and made him introdu get introduced. to. <laughs> and then we took pictures together and everything. And I got her name because I knew I was going to post it on social media. And she said something in the comments, actually, too. But we had her picture taken. But it was kind of cool having someone in a random place <laughs> recognize me. And it's funny because everyone lately has been saying, you're the you're the lady with the blue hair, but I've seen other people with blue hair. It's not like I'm the only one with the blue that hair. That has to do with your newfound stardom. I'm just telling <laughs> you. Newfound stardom. 
<laughs> Which I love dearly. <laughs> really. If people come and say, hey, you're the Avon lady. That's one thing. Or if they come up and say, hey, I, I know you're silver, but they say, you're the lady with the blue hair. <laughs> that's kind of, that, that's oh, probably said, a pretty good reference there. Scott says she was close to hugging her in the picture. Don't forget, I got that new rule, Scott. Oh, no, matter of fact, uh, Jeff doesn't know this one. So I've always, um, one of the Avon reps name is Tim Brown, and he is gorgeous, by the way. Uh, he, he's married, but a girl can dream. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, I always managed to get a hug off of Tim Brown, right? So in New York, though, uh, I came up with a new strategy that has worked really, really well. Yeah. Um, I saw him, got my full hug and everything. And then um, next time I saw him, I acted like I didn't know we already saw each other. And that worked 12 times. <laughs> <laughs> about five in he's keeping track and he goes number six he's <laughs> and i'd be like oh, tim i can't believe we haven't run into each other yet and he says bring it in <laughs> oh, that reminds so, me of some of my mischief mischievous mischievous youth i in, in high school i would during christmas time especially i would i would bring mistletoe to school and i would just walk up to girls and have it hanging over my <laughs> head and, and, and just look at them and smile and hope I would did that just, work it did. You, um, yeah, so you got that charm about you. I didn't then. I was an awkward, a oh. very awkward teenager. Oh. But they felt sorry for me, so they gave me a kiss. Yeah, but, Scott said Tim Brown's going to revise his hugging policy. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, I need you to work on this for her. She, she's, she's struggling here. All right. <laughs> but the other thing I did, when I was a freshman in college, uh, I was a music major. I was in the, the marching band at our school. had a pretty well-known marching band. And they, but they always did initiation for freshmen. They called us frosh. And, and the, part of the freshman initiation in the band was they would make you go work out with the ballerinas, the drill, the oh. drill team. And uh, this was, I'm a, I just got out of high school. I, freshman year, I'd never seen the things I was seeing as far as the workouts <laughs> go. And I was, I'd been very sheltered. Very oh. chill. <laughs> but anyway, so they make us go work out with the, with the ballerinas. And my section leader, he said, hey, you see that ballerina over there? Her name is Diane. Go kiss Diane. And I said, this is embarrassing. <laughs> and so I walked over there. I said, Diane, I said, I'm sorry. I said, but Bert, my section leader, who, who by the way, Bert's one of our, I think he's in our group. Even. Um, I said, he said, I have to come over and kiss you. I'm sorry. I'm embarrassed, but can I kiss you? And she said, oh, of course. And she'd give me a kiss. And I learned I liked that. So then I started going around <laughs> at different times to all the ballerinas and Bert said, I had to give you a kiss. <laughs> so I'm so sorry. I'm so embarrassed about this, but would that be okay? And finally, the ballerina section leader came over talking to Bert. He said, are you sending that freshman around to every ballerina to kiss him? <laughs> and he says, which one? And she said, that one. And pointed at me and he said, yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> he had my back. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah. What's that Cobra, word? I'll always love you for that, man. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you go. And I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> You can take the, the oh, never mind. Uh, this, the, uh, no, it's sick. <laughs> well, okay, well, I think that'd be funny. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it's really been fun for me. And, and and I've told you this behind the scenes before. It has been so much fun for me to watch all of this process with you. Oh. Be because, you, you, of course, you've been well known in Avon circles anyway, but now this is taking on its own character. And you're uh, you're getting... You, I, I told you, you'll be stepping into your celebrity, and, and you are, and it's, it's so much fun for me to watch. I, I just, I, that, that is probably just about as special as the book itself to me, oh. just to watch that, or at least it's a big part of the whole, the whole scenario for me. So I, I'm enjoying it. So I'm know, living vicariously have... through you. Nobody knows me. <laughs> you know, I asked Robert, and I don't know what you'll say about this, but. Um, this not, I didn't just start working on this, by the way, but I've tried to, for quite a while, have a brand that's me, that's not just known for my direct sales company. Right. So my own separate brand. Right. And I don't know if I've been doing that well with that or not. And okay. I said that to Robert and he's like, yeah. So I, I don't do, I think this has helped it a lot. Right. Right. This has helped it a lot, but I do think I had some kind of start 
Right. You know what I mean? But and yeah. I think, uh, by the way, going back to what somebody we were talking about earlier, Christy Rufino would be a great source for you on things like that as well. She's just amazing. Oh, Alexandra, that, that I just did her show said, I think you're there, Lisa. Thank Hi, you. Alexandra. Thank you so much. Thank you yes. for helping, helping my co-star become just so well known. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, well, it's I I just like um I well I think everybody ought to have a brand them, you know, a separate what, thing. Right. Cuz that's part of my life. It's not my entire uh, identity. Right. Uh, and and I I've, I've wanted that all along. Well, one of, so yes indeed. Yeah. One of the things we did today but to uh, try to come up with something creative for the the show was we Lisa put a post out earlier saying, "What do you guys want to learn? What do you want to learn about us? What do you want to learn if it's a business thing?" What do you want to learn behind the scenes? And, and we had some awesome comments. I, I got to read some of the comments and then we'll answer the questions. Uh, Eunice Chase had uh, uh, three of them, actually. Number one was organ, organ, office organization ideas and questions to ask when doing an interview, which is that's a great thing. Uh, then uh, when will book two be done and how's how's the squirrels doing? Eunice, leave it alone. <laughs> I'm kidding, don't do it. And then whose voice is all the squirrels? The this squirrel is the most serious question that was asked all day. And then again, it goes back to Eunice. And she said, Whose voice is sexier, Jeff's or Lisa's? Ooh. <laughs> I guess it's who depends on the listener, wouldn't it be? <laughs> I think it would. But, <laughs> but see, I actually I put on a different voice for the show. This is not my normal voice. My normal voice is, well, I don't really know how. <laughs> That's exactly so. I don't, it's kind of strange for me. I, I try. No, hey, do you know? I better tell you what I tell people about the audio because someone's bound to tell you, and you're then you're going to be like, <laughs> right? I said. I said, you got to listen to the audio because my co author has this deep, rich, <laughs> Texas, sexy voice. And I said, he's married, but a girl can dream. <laughs> Hey, that, that's okay. If it sells books, I'm good with that. <laughs> so, in other words, I'm encouraging all this to go. Yeah, all that's this right. hero hero worship of you. Oh, that's goodness. what I'm encouraging. Right, let's, let's look here. We also have uh, a great question from Teresa Corcoran Staples. Uh, I would like to know how you both knew that direct sales would be a good fit for you. You're both rock stars now. Well, thank you for your kindness there. Uh, obviously, it worked out. Just curious as what your process was, so to speak. Uh, Linda Daniel said, can't Choosing. wait, such similar thing. What made you, Lisa and Jeff, start in direct sales? And then Monica, <laughs> Monica asked uh, so about a dad joke or two. So anyway, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do that a little bit of that right now. So. so Scott, by the way, said, don't ask her about office organizing. So if you end up wanting to answer that one, that's going to have to be Jeff answering it because Scott knows dang well that my <laughs> office is a crap hole. <laughs> I'm and you know, Jeff will be organized. You probably have a list of the inventory of your office in a spreadsheet. I do not. I, I, I was more organized in my office back when I was still with Aflac. Oh. And I learned how to do spreadsheets back then because I would track so many numbers. There was no way I could physically track it without doing that. Oh, uh, um, Alexandra but, wants to know the merch thing. So can I change the banner? Everybody got this banner down? We're going to yeah. post these. We're going to post these in the group, too. Yeah. So I'm going to change the banner briefly. The other one. Go ahead. Sorry, sir. That's all right. Uh, but uh, Eunice, I don't have a lot of advice on how to off organize an office, especially because it varies based on your business. So I, I'm not sure that I'm the right person. That's a interview question, though. I'm really good at because I, I part of my job with Affleck was interviewing, and basically what I wanted to do when I was interviewing someone is find out what they wanted, and I would ask them questions mm -hmm. about what they're looking for, what they're good at, what they like to do. Is it, you know I wanted to know about them. And then whatever they told me, if it fit into our model, then I would say, well, I've got some good news for you. The things that you really want for your life, this career path fits that. And then I would talk about why, and then I would go into what we did after that. So interview questions I would do was always focused on them. What, what do they like? What are they looking for? That so Pig of? says you have folders for everything, Lisa. That's organization. That is true. You know, the folder rule is not real unless I have a folder for it. And I'm not going on a trip without the trip folder. That's that true. is a major problem. What you need is a folder that lists where all your folders are. Then you'd be good to <laughs> I bet you have that. <laughs> nope, I know. I know. Uh, let's see. When will book two be done? Lisa and I have begun discussions about doing a sequel in 2024. I've already committed to two books this year. And I can't, I don't think I can commit to more than that. Although well, I we, do don't, we, we don't want them that close together. Let me do my job. Yeah. I need time to do my job, sir. 
Well, if they, we start writing in 2024, it won't come out till 2025. So. And that, but that's that's fine. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. Yeah. I I like to, yeah. I have draw that. this thing out, baby. Draw it out. <laughs> Keep them wanting more. That, uh, it takes a while to really get a foothold doing stuff like this, I does. think. It does. And you're doing an awesome job on that, by the way. I knew you would. Thank you. I am trying my best. You didn't know I would. You didn't I, I didn't know your skill set, but I knew you had an audience. And then as I got to know you, I knew that you would keep this going just oh, like you Oh, okay. Should. Okay. I learned. Yeah, I'm still stuck on that. Why does that bother me? I just thought you thought. The reasons I that I won't say on the call. <laughs> I thought you thought I was smarter out of the gate, and it upset me that you didn't think I was a smarter out of the gate. I, guess, I, don't, I don't know, know you that well. I knew I liked you. I, I didn't know you that well. Anyway. I know. Yeah. Right. No. Okay. Okay. You, Go ahead. Eunice, Eunice asked how the squirrels are doing. Eunice, I will tell you, they were wonderful with biscuits and gravy. All right, let's go. <gasps> I'm kidding. <laughs> Squirrel kebabs. Oh, that is wrong. Ooh. Ooh. That is wrong, no. mister. Let's go to make a jerk squirrel. A jerk squirrel would be very fitting. <laughs> <laughs> jerk squirrel. Whose yeah, voice but... is sexier, Lisa's or Jeff? <laughs> well, that's obvious. No, it's Jeff. <laughs> it's Jeff. <laughs> yeah, I guess it depends, right? It, it depends on what you're looking for. <laughs> I yeah, I have my moments. Yeah, people. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. I... I how did we get in direct sales? A couple of questions that are very similar. Yeah, Talk about your, your story about getting into direct sales. What made you do that? Oh, know, okay. Even though most people know mine except lately people, but um, in direct sales, I remember the Avon lady coming to my house. Uh, mm -hmm. My first earrings were from Avon. My first clone was Sweet Honesty. I remember that. So when I moved to Guam, uh, I quit high school and got married because I'm an idiot in a good way. And then um, I saw the other, I know, the <laughs> other wives. I know you give me heck for calling myself an idiot, but. But that's my favorite line. Every time we're doing an interview with anybody, <laughs> you'll throw that in. And, I, and I'm sitting here knowing it's coming. And when it finally comes out there, it's, here it comes, here it comes. <laughs> don't, don't laugh yet. Don't laugh yet. Because <laughs> evidently I'm an idiot. I think that only works if I say it with a straight face, though. Because <laughs> evidently I'm an idiot. Uh, but anyway, okay, so. But I mean, I am an idiot for marrying at 18 anyway. No, uh, don't tell my mother she was right. So then um, I saw the other wives make it, uh, having parties like Tupperware, Prince's House and all that stuff. And I thought, I, I got to make some money somehow here. And I did other things, but I, I signed up to sell Avon. I wrote the company and sent them uh, the check. They sent me the kit. It was like that. I didn't have somebody recruit me. It was because I remembered selling in high school. And, you know, one funny thing is um, one of my high school classmates uh, sold Avon when we were in high school the whole time, and she didn't continue on doing it. And I ended up being the one that's known for it. So it is kind of odd that that happened because in high school, she was the one that was always the Avon rep. And I don't think she did it after high school, not that I know of. But although, oh, 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 one more thing, and then you can go, okay, sorry. Um I'm at this Avon rally. This is after I'd, I'd done well for a while. I'm at this Avon rally in Massachusetts and somebody from my high school class was in the audience and she didn't know it was me because um, my last name wasn't my maiden name. And then when she saw I was, she came up and she said, are you Lisa Witten? You look like Lisa Witten. And I said, yeah, yeah. I said, Carol, it's me. I'm, yeah. And she's like, oh my God. And she <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of awesome, but because, right, I was no uh, no hero in high school, I'll tell you that. So, uh, none of us were. <laughs> the ones that were heroes in high school sometimes aren't always heroes later. It, it just right. works out. Some are, some are. Uh, it, it's oh, funny. I was, I was speaking in a in a group of uh, new, new salespeople for Aflac when I, <laughs> this was when I was a regional sales coordinator. Pretty good sized group. And uh, after I got through talking, somebody came up to me and said, are you really originally from Dalton, Georgia? And I said, yes, I am. She said, do you know where Red Wine Cove is? I said, yes, I do. I grew up pretty close to that. And it turns out her father, her stepfather was my bus driver. True story. And she came up to me and, and uh, I thought, wow, this is cool. It's because here I am in Texas speaking in front of a group, doing a little motivational talk and my bus driver's stepdaughter was in there. So anyway, it was not funny. It's just there. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
Well, no, I think that's neat. Uh, uh, how I got into direct sales. I've actually been in uh, two direct sales organizations. And, and even though AFLAC, no, the I didn't know that. well, it, I consider AFLAC direct sales, even though oh, it's an okay, insurance okay. model. Okay. We were self-employed. Uh, you had to learn how to, your skill set, you had to learn how to keep motivated yourself. You had to do all the same things you do in direct sales if you're going to be successful. Uh, the only difference was instead of you going out recruiting your own team to start with, uh, if, you, if you recruit, if you were an entry level agent and you recruited someone, you got a 5% bonus on what they did first year. Oh, yeah. But you built a team really when you promoted it to district sales coordinator, regional sales coordinator, and state sales coordinator, which that's what I did. But uh, I, my first experience in, in direct sales was actually in the mid 80s and it was in the Amway business. And uh, I had a, a reasonable level of success when I moved to Texas and got a promotion. I ended up letting that go. But uh, what drew me to it, quite frankly, is one simple thing. Well, two, I needed to make more money than I was making. But also it's the self-employed part because I am much better at shaving the boss's face than kissing the boss's ass. <laughs> I'm sorry, I usually yeah. say foot. I usually stop. Sorry, folks. <laughs> Were you, you have children put their fingers in there, so. <laughs> Were you attracted to the because I know in Amway it's the same uh, the culture of self development? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I had I great that. mentors. The things I learned from my mentors there, why I was successful with Aflac. Yeah, there's no question. Uh, and I was reading uh, Jordan Adler's book today, uh, Beach Money, and the list of, what reading some of his stories, and it's the same process. A lot of people who start don't do the things that will make them successful. And so those are the stories of people that don't make it, but everybody who chooses to do the things that will make them successful, they, they go on and build something. Uh, I remember when I was um, in the Amway business, I, I told, uh, I heard the statistic, only one out of 75 people ever made it to district sales. I mean, a direct sales, direct distributor, whatever it was called. And I said, so one out of 75 just means I got to sponsor 75 people somewhere in my, in my downline, in my whip. Mm -hmm. If I sponsor 75, I'm going direct. And I, yeah. I looked at it that way rather than being a negative statistic. And it's like yeah. in, in a lot of insurance groups, you know, there's, there's a really high turnover rate. But I figured out in, in my state, if we did certain things the first 13 weeks and got them at a certain level, we retained 70% of them. And so that was our focus was the first 13 weeks. What can we do to do that? And so it was uh, uh, everything I learned from my mentors in both cases were absolutely why I became successful I, because I bought in. I, you know, if they said, read this book, listen to this recording. It was a cassette tape at an early day. Yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> I, you know, I tell the story often when I'm up being interviewed about fusion points or anything that I do. When uh, in January of 2000, uh, Frank Davies, who was one of my mentors, he was my state sales coordinator with Affleck. He, he handed me two books and he said, I want you to read these two books. And one was John, uh, Dr. John Maxwell's Irrefu 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. And the other was Endless Referrals by Bob Byrne. Those two books changed my life. But you got to say what you usually say about that. Okay. Well, I, they, uh, I, I was a, at this point, I was a district sales coordinator who would make his numbers one year, miss them the next. I wasn't going to get fired, but I really wasn't a superstar. And we're in the, and this is really, it did happen. Went to that meeting and Frank says, uh, I want you to read these books. And I said, Frank Davies. <coughs> Sorry, folks, I'm still getting over a cold. <coughs> I said, Frank Davies, I'm a grown man. <laughs> I bleeped myself there. How's that? I, I'll decide if I'm going to read these books or not. And I'm going to read those books. <laughs> You, I, I get excited when you tell that, just like you get excited when I tell the other one. I know it's coming, and I'm like, <laughs> well, I did something similar to him, and, and he, he just had laughed. I did something similar when I was interviewing to be his regional sales coordinator for him. Uh, I had a phone call on the way to doing the interview, that, and it was a friend of mine. He said, "Look, uh, he was telling, giving me some pointers." He said, "By the way, Frank hates beards." And at the time, I had a full oh. beard, not just the, not just this thing. <laughs> I'm circling backwards because on my screen it's wrong. Anyway, all right. but and I said, "Well, thanks for the heads up." So I do the interview. It went well. I felt pretty sure that I was at least a contender for the position. And uh, Frank says, "Well, do you have any questions of me?" And I said, "Well, I have one." I said, "I hear that you don't like beards. Are you going to ask me to shave my beard?" And he said, "Well, I did, that's true. I don't like for my managers to have beards. If I'd ask you to shave that beard if I give you the promotion." And I said, "Frank Davies, I'm a grown." <laughs> Man, 
I'll decide if I shave my beard or not. I'll shave that bad boy in a heartbeat for a promotion. <laughs> <laughs> and Frank had this, this, oh, wonderful laugh. And it was, <laughs> and he'd start laughing. <laughs> it was so funny. Oh, God. Now, is, he, is he still there? He is still alive. He's long retired. He, he's actually uh, had some health issues the last few years. I, I go and see him when I'm up in the North Texas area. But oh, that's neat. He is. He is. A, he is a, Matter of fact, he's one of the people that I dedicated the unexpected tour guide to in the dedication. Uh, he's, oh, just, he's a wonderful neat. mentor. By the way, for those of you that do think I have a good voice, <laughs> the unexpected tour guide is now available on Audible. And I'll, I'll post the links. I can't post them in the chat right here for some reason, but I'll post the links uh, for that. If you'll go to Audible, if you're not an Audible member right now, if you'll go to Audible on the link that I'll post, they will actually give you the unexpected tour guide for free. And then uh, you can use that because it's like you get your first two books free or something like that. And the, uh, that's fine. If you don't do it that way, I think they've got it listed for it. The price seems to vary every day. I have no control over that. Any, somewhere between five and seven dollars. I think when they see people buying it, it goes up. So you better hurry. <laughs> but uh, it, I was really pleased with the, the everything came out right. And by the way, if you go get the audible version of the Unexpected Tour Guide, there, I put a commercial in the middle in, in there. And mm -hmm. if you do that, I'm going to give you one of my online sales courses that I normally sell for $97. I'm going to give it to you for free just That's because awesome. you bought the Audible book. What and there's a, it deal. tells you what website to go to to get that code. And it's a coupon code, but it's called Build a Golden Rule Referral Network. And it's one of the best ways I've ever seen to get referrals. Uh, is an adaptation that I actually did from Bob on endless referrals. I just applied that in my business context. So anyway. So we got I I Go found ahead. that men I've met to uh, use to be in direct sales were mostly involved with Amway more than any other direct sales company. I think that's, I've found that true too. Um, the thing is though, I've done a bunch of other companies now, like Hempworks is um, a lot younger. They skew a lot younger and a lot more couples. And I did hip words. I wouldn't want to go to work. I'd be going, yeah, hey, y'all go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's not THC stuff. Oh, okay, okay. TV, Never mind. So, okay. I, I don't know anything about it. No. Right. Okay. And then set out cards actually is um I see more men, more successful men. So I don't think that's necessarily true about Amway, but I do run into a lot of men. Do you have any opinion on why men are attracted to Amway in particular? No, I, I think for the most part, it seemed to be couples when I was doing it. It was husband oh, and wife okay. teams. And so and yep. they were both on stage and both telling their stories. And that was what I was going to earlier on that. I was used to people telling their stories. So yeah. me telling a story, even as a direct distributor, telling your story was kind of pretty common. But, yeah. uh, but uh, I don't, I, it was more couples. And, and so that's at least that's what I saw at the time. I bet 90% of the people that I was around, it was husband and wife teams. I kind of like that and sent out cards with the guys because they have a different play on how to do this than we do. Like I like hearing your stories because you do work your business much different than me. And um, I, I want to get some uh, take whatever lessons I can get from that to make my business better. You know what I mean? Alexandra, thank you so much. You're what a sweetheart. Said? She just bought the book. She just bought the oh, unexpected book nice. on Audible. Oh, awesome. So, yeah. And uh, uh, well, there was another one on here, but go ahead. Uh, our last question that we had was uh, Monica asked for some dad jokes. And it's so funny when put on the spot, I, it's really hard for me to call up a joke. And I was texting my daughters earlier and I said, okay. He's lying. He's lying. He's <laughs> well, I come up with it when I don't have to, but then when I want to, it's like, it's like performance anxiety and we won't go there. Uh -huh. <laughs> But, <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> I can't believe you said that. Okay, sorry. I'm talking about being on stage. Okay, I'm. I I know that's what you were talking about. <laughs> but anyway, so but I, I texted my daughter and said, "What's your favorite dad joke that I tell you?" Because most of them they just groan, and I don't blame them. <laughs> uh, Lindsay said it was mostly I would make up songs and make up new words, and then they would not know that word that those weren't <laughs> real words. They would get to school, be telling people, and, and the, their friends would say. Those aren't the right words. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you didn't do the squirrel thing. You didn't teach them that. Ch right. No, it was chipmunks. chipmunks. Oh, yes, I did. Yeah, that was the version they learned. Chipmunks and they roasting went to on school, open fire. Sam. <laughs> chipmunks roasting on an open fire. But uh, uh, my, uh, I did get one dad joke reply back, so I'm going to do this for Monica. Okay. And it's not really a dad joke. It's really a true story. I've been talking about last night for me. 
I'd had kind of a long day. It was a little stressful, but the truth is I actually slept like a baby. I woke up every two hours crying and I wet the bed. <laughs> <laughs> wah, 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 wah. <laughs> you are so wrong, mister. <laughs> <laughs> I am so wrong in so many ways, but it's a good partnership for us. <laughs> yeah, Janet from Ireland's on and she said Essence is her new company. Um, not new now. She's been doing a year and something at least. Right, Janet? They have a lot of men and they're very successful. So I think I think there are a lot of men in direct sales, mm -hmm. but I think the statistics they gave us was it's still 80 percent women. Right. So that's yeah, that's that's high. Oh, hey, Alexander, Alexander saw, likes the chipmunks. <laughs> if you go back, Alexander, if you go back, I think it was our last episode in December before Christmas. I actually had written lyrics to the the, the Christmas song. <laughs> I had written lyrics that weren't exactly the originals, and uh, I sang it at the end of the episode. There, if you want to go look that up, and you, if if just that one part entertained you, the whole thing might work out all right. And so. he's a good singer. I have a bad voice. You do not. I don't know who told you that, but they lied. Well, I, I, I've got the music background. I've been around good singers. I, I know. I, yeah, I can carry a tune. And so I like put, the, the shades on one you did. That one. <laughs> that, that, was not, well, that, that was Frosty the Blues Man. Well, <laughs> Frosty the Blues My Man. My name though. is Frosty. I'm <laughs> full of snow. It's not as good without the glasses and hat. <laughs> Denver and the Mile High Orchestra, they're so awesome. I love that group, and they, they, they do it. I'll have to put that list in there. We ought to add a couple more and put the list out again. Yeah. With uh, the, uh, yeah, I will, the I will post in our group uh, chat the links. If you if you're look if you're on if you've never been on Audible before and you want to join, join for getting one of our books. Either say the Lady with the Blue Hair or the Unexpected Tour Guide, because what they'll do is they'll give it to you. Uh, you get like two or three credits when you start off, and, and so they'll do it that way. Plus, Audible is a great great tool if you if you like to learn from books but you don't really always have time you feel like to sit down and read i love it uh and um so i'll post the links there i'll post links if you're a new audible person and then i'll post a link if you're not an, a new audible person so you can get it that way but uh speaking of that I'll, lisa and i are, are as you guys know from previous episodes we we're friends with john david mann and anna gabriel mann uh, as well as, of course, Bob Berg. And John and Bob are the, pe the two people who put together The Go-Giver mm -hmm. in the entire series. And uh, John's got a new book coming out. He's got a series that he's already started. Uh, it started with Steel Fear, which was a murder mystery set on an aircraft carrier. He's got a, The next one was called Cold Fear, which was a murder mystery basically set, a, set in Ireland, no, excuse me, Iceland. And the newest one's coming out this summer. It's called Blind Fear. And... Uh, it, it's <laughs> it's going to be good. I'm just telling you, this was this is one of those things you want to uh, you want to Are check you out. Are you pre-reading? But uh, I think Are you pre-reading. I've pre-read some of it, so <gasps> not the whole book. You punk. Not not I'm not pre-reading. I want to pre-read too, punk. Uh, I'm reading the first few chapters. Go to go to his website and join up to be part of it. That his email list, and you'll get part oh, of it. Yeah. But, uh, I'm going, to, I'm going to reach out to John and Anna, especially to see if they'll join us on a show coming up. Because uh, let me tell you who John David Mann is for me. Is you think about uh, John Grisham or uh, uh, Patterson. I forget Patterson's first name. But uh, th th these, these writers that are so great at what they do. John David Mann is to me what John Grisham is to people that like that, that genre. And... Uh, his, he and his wife, Anna, wrote a great book uh, called The Go-Giver Marriage. And it, it's a, if you're in a relationship, you should get that book, too. But anyway, I, I'm going to see if we can't get them on our show pretty soon. And so we'll have a – can you do a four-way show on this, Lisa, with, with the stream? I think so. Show? I'm pretty okay. sure. Can, uh, I, can I tell you, to, to wrap it up, my John David Mann awesome story? Yes, please. Yo, oh, I drove down to Connecticut with some one of my team members to see him at the bookstore. And we were in the bookstore and um, we were waiting for him to come in. And when he came in, uh, he looked over and saw me. We know each other. And he gave me the air guns. And, and I looked at him and I gave him the air guns back. And the bookstore owner goes, oh, my God, you know him? <laughs> he was like, yes, I do. <laughs> He's, oh, he's genuinely so a good person, and so is his wife Anna. They're they're two of my favorite people, and so I love it when good people I, do well. And 
I'm sure this he is... didn't even know how much that helped me out that day. <laughs> just doing that. <laughs> he didn't do it worried about that. He did it because he liked you. And he, and he, yeah, he yeah, he's out. awesome. He was yeah. awesome. He, right, he did a book, a book reading. Uh, oh, yeah. Could you post those book names on the group on Facebook? You should. Yes, I'll, I'll post it in the group on Facebook, and uh, that way it'll be there because uh, I can't, for whatever reason, post in our chat here. I know we're running a little bit over. We apologize. We try to respect your yeah. time, but we also get a little Gabby. <laughs> we're Gabby, but we're fun. Yes, we are. Fun Thank again. you all so much. Uh, Keep posting. If you haven't already posted either at least a rating or a review on Amazon, I've said the lady with the blue hair, please do so. Uh, because again, uh, those things are huge in the, in, in the promotion of a book. Uh, and then if you, if you, if you, uh, get the unexpected tour guide on audible, uh, you'll get the free course for me. It's a $97 course. And I just give you a coupon that waves the whole thing. Uh, and it's a yeah, and course I've had up and been charging for for years. Every so. single book, uh, helps us um get more um momentum going like a snowball yeah. downhill and every every big successful book has been building like that and we're building i think we're we're doing pretty well building yeah. some momentum you know i don't know if i've ever told the story on here about what the unexpected tour guide's about it's basically it's a young salesperson who's struggling really trying to find his way and he meets a homeless man and the relationship between the two of them totally changes his direction in life and it's a story that touches your heart pretty close to the same level, I think, as it said, "Lady with the Blue Hair." Uh, I think that's a be- I think I re- that I think that's a better book, said the Lady with Blue Hair. But uh, well, I cried with an unexpected tour guide. I actually I cried. That's amazing. I uh, yeah. Don't make fun of me. <laughs> Please I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I know. All right, everybody. We love you guys. Uh, we'll see you next Thursday thank you so much thank you everybody